Hi and welcome back to Basic Bible Today. We're glad that you're tuning in. And as I said before and a thousand other times on this program, we hope that these little Bible studies encourage you and your walk with God in some way to stay strong in the Lord and to live for Jesus Christ and be a servant of Him uh, through, uh, to the rest of your life and until he comes back or or he calls you home by the way to the grave. And uh, and I do believe that Jesus is coming back soon. So hopefully this is encouragement to you to keep you living for God. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, a story in the Bible that uh, that a lot of times they we use, the, we use it, but we use it different ways. And today I want to talk to you about on our friendship. What kind of friends do we have in our life? What kind of people that we allow to to be role uh, to be role models to be examples in our life and a lot of times <clears throat> young people uh, they look to tv celebrities they look to uh, sports players they look to uh, the american idols you might say but we as as we look at our life spiritually who do we allow to be role models in our life who do we allow to come into our lives because it's it's a proven fact if we allow uh our friends uh, to come into our life that are not child of, not children of God, they, they can do damage to our spiritual walk with God. They can pull us away from Jesus Christ. They can pull us away from the things of God. And today, um, that's what I want to talk a little bit about, our friendships and uh, what kind of friends do we really have. Do they encourage us to be a child of God? Do they encourage us to live for God? Do they encourage us to be what God wants us to be? Uh, if not, maybe we need to back up and consider what kind of friends we really have. Uh, because our friends, uh, the ones that we associate with, as uh, I, I hate to tell you this, uh, they kind of rub off on us. They kind of, uh, per se, that they don't become us, but you can be around someone so, some long, so long that you became, become, how do I want to say this, uh, become acting like them. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh, my friend does that, now I'm doing that. It's because of the examples that they put in our life is become, being connected to them. And uh, we do have a friend today that uh, he wants to become our friend. His name is Jesus Christ. And he wants, we want him to come in our life and we want him to, to rub off on us, you might say, so that we could pattern our life after him. But today I'm going to talk to you about a, a guy that had a friend in the Old Testament that uh, uh, his friend kind of led him astray, kind of led him down a bad path, kind of led him away from the things of God and and uh, set him up, you might say, for defeat. And uh, we've got to make sure that we don't have that kind of friend in our life. And uh, if we pray and we ask God, uh, God will enlighten us if we have proper friends in our life. And of course, the Scripture is a good place to start. Read, study the scriptures. If you read, study the scriptures, they will show you, uh, the scriptures will show you if your friend is what you need to have in your life as a pattern or or not. And, of course, Proverbs 17, 7 says this, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversities. And uh, we, need to ha- we need to have friends. I'm not saying that we don't need to have friends, but we've got to make sure that we pick our friends wisely. And we've got to make sure that our friends are godly, especially as children of God, because if we've got people that are outside of their friends and... Uh, we hang with them all the time, you might say, and we follow after them. They're going to pull us away from God. They're going to pull away from our Bible reading. They're going to pull away from our uh, our prayer time. Uh, so it's real imperative that we pick our friends uh, wisely. And uh, Amnon, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of Amnon. That's who I want to talk a little bit about today. And uh, and, and you can find the story in uh in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 13, and we're going to refer to that here in a little bit. But see, Am, he, 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 tried to, he tried to keep from sinning. He, he knew the Word of God. He knew what was right. He knew what was, what was wrong. He, he had a reputation. He, he was a king's son. He was someone that you, you might say was, uh, was uh, favored. He was someone that I'd probably guarantee you was taught and trained uh, the laws of God in his life. He had, he had all the silver. He had all the gold. He had everything he needed to de- have. He, he was royalty. He, w- he was a prince. He, he had it all. How to, he might have had, he had the life, he had his life figured out. Uh, but, but one thing that he didn't have was a good friend in his life. He didn't have somewhere one there, a friend that would teach and train him the things of God. Uh, and that, that was his kicker. He had a friend. But he didn't have a friend that was of God. 
And of course, uh, he knew the word of God. His, his, David, the king, King David was his dad, and he penned these words in in Psalms chapter one nineteen and nine. Uh, Whether all shall a young man cleanse his ways, but taking herein according to the word of God. So he knew he needed the word of God, and I'm sure he was educated in the word of God, because the Bible says David was a man after his own uh, God's own heart, and I'm sure that he somewhere along the way he taught his children the word of God. He he showed them the way that they needed to go. He he trained. Uh, you might say he might have uh, trained them in the ways of God, but it. It, it, it was up to them as individuals, and sometimes we're that way. Uh, as individuals, we, we teach and train our children. We teach and train uh, others the ways of God, but we leave that in their their past whether they want to obey the gospel or not. Uh, but it's up to us to teach and train them. But but Ammon had a friend. His friend, uh, his friend probably wasn't like him. His friend probably never had a conscience. Uh, we as children of God, we got the best conscience in the world. Uh, what do you mean by that, uh, Brother Randy? What I'm saying is we have God living in us. We have the best preacher, the best conscience that anyone in this world can ever have to keep us on a straight and narrow, to keep us doing what we need to do, to to keep us down the plain, uh, keep us down the straight path that God's laid out before us. Uh, when we get to the left or we get to the right, we got the Word of God, we got the voice of God, and we got God in us that says, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! You're getting too far to the right, or you're getting too far to the left. You need to, you need to back up. This is the road I need you to take." And a lot of times, when we allow friends to come into our life, we don't allow them. Uh, we allow them to speak to us, and we really don't care if they're speaking good things to us. So it's very careful uh, what kind of friends that we choose to allow us to speak in our life. Uh, see, he Am, Ammon had a, a conscience, but his friend didn't. It, it, he had that. He had that. He had that. Uh, that uh, self check in his life that says, "Whoa, you're doing this wrong. You, you need. To, you're going about the whole wrong way." But yet he still listened to his friend. Second uh, Samuel chapter. Uh, uh, 13 verse 1, it says, Now David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar, and Ammon uh, was her half-brother. He, he fell desperately in love with her. Verse 2 says, And Ammon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill because she was a virgin. And Ammon thought that he could never have her. See, he 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 never... He had uh, he, nothing, in, nothing like this had ever happened before. You might say he he fell in love. He he was a half brother, but he fell in love with his stepsister. And and uh, of course, back then it wasn't like it is today. It wasn't considered to be um, how do I want perverted, if I can say that, or crazy uh, for for brothers and sisters to marry. See, I can even take you back to uh, uh, where. Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah were half brothers and sisters. Got married and had children, and and was was used in the plan of God until he lied uh, about the whole matter uh, to to keep from getting his wife took from him. And that's a whole different uh, story in that. But uh, but but he had a conscience, and he and, but he, he allowed his conscience to work on him, but not work on him enough. See, we got to allow God to work on us. And we got to allow God to speak to us, and we got to allow God to come into our lives and allow that conscience. But friends can override that. Friends can come in and and, and stop everything that God's doing. Can come in and cause everything in our life to fall apart. You might say, uh, and, and just crumble. And just a matter of seconds, when they start speaking and start telling us things that we need to do. And of course, according to. Uh, uh, his friend that he had, uh, he brought shame on his family. He brought death two years later to his life because he listened to his friend and not to, to God, not to God's Word. So it's imperative that when we have friends in our life, uh, that we allow them, uh, when they talk to us, that we don't allow them to take us away from God. Because, see, not only, uh, not only do we hurt others, we're going to be hurt ourselves in some way when we disobey the voice of God in our life. Let me continue reading here, and then we'll get 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 in with the teaching a little bit more. Uh, he was very crafty. His friend, his friend was his, even his own cousin. His friend was his family. So, so we're imperative, even sometimes family, uh, if they're if they're close to you. Just because they don't have a heart and desire to serve God, we got to make sure our relationship with God becomes first before we allow our friend and our, even our family to come in to pull us away from that. Uh, his own cousin, uh, Jonadad, he was the son of David's brother. And one day Jonadad said to uh, Ammon, Ammon, if I'm saying, what is the trouble? Why, why are you looking so bad? Why are you being ejected from morning to morning? Every time I come by, you look down and depressed. 
And so he told him, I, I'm in love with my half-sister Tamar. And you know what he said? Well, this is what uh, Jonadad said. I'll, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to your bed and pretend that you're sick. And when your father comes to see you, then tell him that you want Tamar to come and fix you food that'll make you feel better. So that's what he did. He listened to his friend, and he didn't listen to his conscience. He didn't listen to God. And what it did, it did. It brought shame into his life. It brought shame on the family. And uh, it, it brought bad things into his life. And the result of his sin, the result of his sin was this. He, he actually got so caught up in the, in the listening to his friend that he actually even raped his half-sister. That's crazy. Because he did, decided to disobey the voice of God uh, and, and, and the conscience that God placed in. He, he fell in love with her. And, and, and just like she said, if you read the rest of the story, and I don't want to read the rest of the story because it goes through the whole chapter. Even Tamar said, hey, go to the king. Ask the king for me. David will allow you to marry me. David will allow you to allow me to be your wife. And whatever kind of relationship they would have had if that would have happened, but yet that's not the way that he chose. He chose to do it according to the way his friend told him to do it. And, of course, after that, he after raping her, he ruined her life. He he ruined her for good. She, she never had any children, according to the scriptures that I found, and she was probably emotionally scarred. For, and, and the Bible says not only that, the love that he had for her after raping her became... That love turned into hatred so much that he even hated her more than he loved her. And this is not what it was supposed to be, but all because it all came down to the result of his friend telling him what to do. It all became down to the decision to follow what his friend said and not obey uh, the voice of God in our life. we got to understand that, that God's voice is in our life for a reason. It's there to teach us. It's there to train us. It's there to... To, uh, uh, to make us a vessel used of God. But if we allow friends, family, society, culture, tradition, you could you throw it all in there, it doesn't matter. If we allow any of this to come into our lives and we listen to it over God, then it's going to be trouble. There's going to be, we're going to be in a world of hurt coming down the road. And as I told you, if you read the rest of the story, it, 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 it's bad for him because his half-brother told his sister Tamar, half sister Tamar, that hey, he might have raped you, but I'm gonna get evil I'm gonna get I'm gonna avenge him. I'm gonna I'm going to take care of him. It may not happen now. And then as you read the story two years later, his own his own brother killed him because of the act of of uh, listening to a friend, you might say. And his friend was still alive. His friend was still out doing whatever. Think about that. A lot of times we allow friends to come in our life and to talk to us and uh, tell us all kind of thing and we're we're in this world of hurt and our, our head's spinning and we're losing everything with God and we're going through all this uh if I can use this without offending anybody life's hell and and, and we were like wow and then we look back and our friends has got it made so that our friends don't really care about us the only thing they care about is themselves so it's important that when we pick friends that we pick godly friends that's going to say hey you're doing this wrong, or, or hey, let me help you in this matter, but let me encourage you according to the Word of God. Let me show you the way that God wants you to do it. Let me show you according to the Scripture. That's the kind of friend that we have in our life. And if we don't have friends like in our life, and all we got is friends that tell us to go ahead and do whatever we want, or, or let me help you sin, or let me help you do it this way, then we're going to be in for a world of hurt. And that's not the kind of friends that we need. Uh, we need friends that's going to say, oh, I'm going to step on your heart here a little bit. Uh, I might hurt your feelings, but I'm going to make sure that I show you what the Word of God says about this matter. And that's his friend, uh, his own cousin, his family should have said, whoa, this is what needs to happen. He should have been like Tamar. Oh, if you want her, why don't you go to the king and ask for her hand of marriage? Do it proper. Do it right. Do it, do it where you could have dignity in it. But no. That's not the way his friend wanted it. His friend uh, told him, hey, this is what you need to do. Do it this way. Do it my way. And then his friend just walks off, and, and he this rape happens, and he encouraged it and stood behind it. And, and his friend, there, there, we don't find any place where anything happened to his friends for what vice he give. So it's important that we, we take good advice from our friends, godly friends. Uh, his friend didn't help him but hurt him. And a lot of times that's what happens to us. Our friends will hurt us. They may not seem to hurt us, or they may not do it out of tension, but when it comes to being what God wants us to be, sometimes their advice that we follow is contrary to the Word of God. They're hurting us. They're not helping us. And uh, we got to make sure that we have good friends. Uh, here's what Proverbs chapter 13 
and 20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but he that accompanies the fool shall be destroyed. If you want to be wise, you need to have, especially when it comes to spiritual wisdom, then you need to get with people that know the Bible. You need to get people that are elders that have walked through the things that say, hey, I can help you. I can teach you. I can I can show you according to the scripture. But if you want to be an idiot and a big fool and you want to make a mess of your life, just listen to anything that people tell you. Do what anybody, it doesn't matter what anybody says, just follow it and you'll have a world of hurt. And... Uh, and uh, we got to make sure that we have friends that won't lead us contrary to the Word of God. If we got friends in our life that are leading the contrary, put this up as a big warning. You're in for a world of hurt. You're in for trouble. You're in for things coming in your life that you don't need to be dealing with. And the only reason you have to deal with them is because you're not listening to God. You're not obeying the conscience that you have in your life. Think about uh, when you was growing up, uh, maybe probably not so much uh, back in the older generation as much as the new generation, but we can use smoking. Uh, uh, probably drugs today, but we'll use smoking for some of the older ones. Uh, maybe your friends at the bus stop or even at... Um, or behind the school, tried to encourage you to smoke, and you knew it was wrong, and and uh, and you didn't uh, you didn't want to uh, do it, but they 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 encouraged you to do so, and you said, oh, one time's not going to hurt. And the next thing you know, you're you're addicted to cigarettes, you're addicted to a habit, and then years down the road, you look at this habit that you have, and almost all, all of a sudden, this this habit that you have is destroying your life. It, it's causing you to uh, get weaker, and then you go to the doctor and come to find out you have cancer because you 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 picked up the habit of smoking uh that's basically the same thing that amon had in his life only it's a little different scenario see we got to make sure that our friends that we have doesn't put things in our life that's contrary to the word of god we got to make sure that our friends that we have in our life are good for us they're encouragers they, they may step on our heart every once in a while but yet they use the word of god to show us the way if they don't use the Word of God, then be very leery on someone giving you directions on what you need to do for your life, especially, especially if you're a child of God, because our direction should come from God. Uh, someone once said, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future, and how true that is. It's why it's because if we hang out with, uh, as Proverbs said, if we hang out with fools, we're going to become a fool. If we hang out with uh, people that are uh, not living for God, then we're going to end up not living for God. We're going to end up losing that relationship. We're going to end up falling into the uh, the wiles of the devil. Uh, so if you show me your friends, and your friends is not godly, and you're a child of God, I'm going to show you that you're not going to be living for God soon. But if you show me your friends, and you're godly, and your friends are godly, then you have a good chance that you're going to be godly and you're going to live for God and you're going to be what God wants you to be. Uh, our friends need to show us. Uh, I, I can show your friend. If you show me your friends, I, I can tell you where you're going spiritually according to the friends that we hang out with. Because it's, it's the same that way. It's because our friends, if they're not living for God, they're going to pant us and they're going to, they're going to make a curve in the road, you might say, that little gradually, gradually related to time, the next thing you know, we're going to be going in this horseshoe bin and the next thing you know, we're going to be like, wow, I've lost my relationship with God and it's all going to come back to the friends that we have. And, of course, uh, your friends also help you uh, determine what kind of habits. If your habits are, if you have good habits or if you have bad ha habits, sometimes it comes back to the friends and the friends that we allow uh, to speak into our lives and to be a part of our lives and to show us. If, uh, if we want to have good habits, then have friends that has good habits. If you want to have bad habits, have friends that have bad habits. It's, it's a proven fact that them habits and that, uh, that pool of your friendship will pull on you. So it's real important that who we associate uh, with in our spiritual walk with God. Amos said it this way in Amos chapter 3, and I'm trying to, to get to where I'm going here. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they agree? If you got one friend that, if you're a friend with someone that's not in the church, how can, it's hard to hold a friendship like that because the one, the one that's, Going to, the one that's not in the church is always going to be leaning towards you to do things that's contrary to the Word of God. Because the proven fact is, we as children of God, we're, we're not strong enough for whatever reason. We should be trying to lead them to Jesus Christ. But a lot of times, we allow that to come into our lives and we, we follow after them instead of trying to be the leader and lead them to Jesus Christ. And uh, and it's hard. It's hard to keep a balance. I'm not saying not have outside friends of church. I'm not saying that. We just can't let them be our priority friends we can't let them be the friends that we go to every time we need advice or go to them to um, 
ask going, hey, I'm going through this spiritually. Tell me what I need to do. Because most of them will say, just give up and quit living for God. That's the easiest thing. Uh, just just join the other side. But that's not the kind of friend we need. We need a friend that says, oh, oh, you need to pray. Or, hey, pull out your Bible and read this scripture here. This will help you through that hard time. Uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 28 and 7 says, He keepeth the law with a wise son, but he that is the companion of a, uh, a righteous man showeth shame to his father. See, our friends, we've got to make sure that we pick right friends when we're living, because this comes back to heaven and hell. Our friends could cause us to go to heaven or it could cause us to go to hell depending on what kind of relationship that they have with Jesus Christ. So it's imperative that we follow the Word of God and pick our friends wisely. Put people in your life that's going to encourage you. Put people in your life that's going to show you what way you need to go. Put people in there that's not afraid to tell you, hey, if you're living for God, you need to do it this way. If you're going to be a child of God, you need to base your life off the Word of God. That's the kind of friends that you need to have. If you're going to be a child of God, Proverbs 29 and 3 says, Whosoever loveth wisdom rejecteth, or rejoices his father, but he that keepeth company with a, a harlot spendeth his substance unwisely. In other words, if we go out there and we run wild with our friends, we're going to waste the things of God that we have. We're going to waste what God has given us. And we don't need to do that because if there was never an hour that we need to be a child of God and stand for the things of God, it's now. There's people that's waiting on us to stand up. They're waiting on us to be their friend and to teach and train them the things of God. So when hard times come, they say, oh, I need to turn to Jesus Christ, or I need to come to church, or I need to pray, or I need to read my Bible, or I need to have a relationship with God, or, or I need to have the Holy Spirit in my life directing me. That's, that's what they're waiting on. They're waiting on us. But a lot of times we allow our friends to destroy us when we should be building them up by being a child of God. Uh, Matthew chapter 12 verse 33 says either make the uh, either make the tree good his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt the tree is known by his fruit now see that's how people know us they know us by the fruits that we bear. And if we allow people to come to our lives that are foolish and they're not living for God, then we're going to bear that fruit. And they're going to look to us and say, what kind of child of God are you to bear this kind of fruit? They want, they want us to see the things of God. They want to see love, joy, peace, long-suffering. They want to see that kind of fruit. They don't want to see bad fruit in our in our walk with God because we allow friends to come in to pull us away from that uh, or, or, or pull us away from reading God or, or reading the Word of God or talking to God. That, that, they want to see someone that's strong. They want to see someone that's grounded, but we can allow our friends to do that. Uh, we really don't understand the magnitude and the pull that our friends have in our life, especially when it comes to living for God. The, uh, there's an old statement out there, and some probably heard it several thousand times, but it says birds of the feather flock together, and how true that is. If you're a child of God, you better be flocking with the people in the kingdom of God. You better not be trying to flock with the outside, because if you flock with the outside people, then you're going to find yourself on the outside of the kingdom of God looking in. You're going to find yourself losing your relationship with Jesus Christ, and you're going to say, how did this happen? It's the friends that you picked. It's the company that you wanted to keep. It's the, it's the ones that you wanted to rub shoulders with to, to make you feel good, to look good, or whatever. I'd rather, I'd rather have very few friends that I knew were living for God to call, that I can call friend that will encourage me than to have thousands of friends out there that tells me not to live for God. Uh, because it's all about our relationship with God. It's all about our salvation, and that's what we're talking about. It's about making heaven our home or ending up in the flames of hell for all eternity. And sometimes our friends can do that. Sometimes our, our friends gives us poor counsel. It's a proven fact. But when it comes to living for God, we've got to make sure that we have friends that are mature, friends that know God's voice, friends that know God's word that will show us what way we need to go. And, uh, of course, uh, um, if you're talking about uh, uh, godly friends, that will, that will, they will lead us the right way. They'll, they'll lead us in, in the way we need to go. But when we have bad friends, uh, they'll, 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 teach, they'll help us have bad desires. Let me put it that way. Or they'll lead us in, uh, in a direction that our desires goes from the kingdom of God to the desires of this world. And uh, they'll pull us away from that relationship with God. It'll pull us into a, a uh, bathtub effect of losing our relationship with God. It's like pulling the uh, plug in the bathtub and the water starts circling down. 
down. When it gets down close to the end, it starts getting faster. That's the way our life is. When we associate with people that are not heavenly or kingdom of God minded, and we've got to have friends like that. They give us, they give us bad directions. They, they send us the wrong way. And, of course, we know there's, a, there's only one way. The Bible says Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's, that's the way we need to be going. That's the way that we need to be following. But a lot of times our friends... Uh, when we have uh, friends that really doesn't care about us and they're friends of the outside, uh, they often give us uh, things in our life that brings division, uh, that brings uh, hatred, bring, brings these battles in our life that we don't need to be face, facing or fighting when it comes to living for God. So we gotta, we got to make sure that, that we don't uh, pick the wrong friends. Because if we pick the wrong friends and, and if we've been a child of God all of our life or come into the church and live for God and and uh, started living for God, and we have these friends, it'll cause us to lose our testimony, especially especially if someone who once walked with God that falls into sin and falls out because of friends in this world, they lose their testimony. And the testimony is the greatest thing we have that we can use to give the others, to lead them to the kingdom of God, to bring them into the the family of God. So we need to make sure that we keep us. And, and, and like I said, even... even um, even, even sometimes our friends can give us advice that we follow that can even lead to death. As Ammon was destroyed by his own uh, brother, killed him two years later after raping his half-sister. Uh, it, it, we got to make sure that we have good, solid advice when it comes to friends. But it all it comes down to what kind of friends do we have? What kind of friends do we really have in our life? Do we have friends that will... Uh, encourage us to do right? Do we have friends that says, I'll pray for you? Or, or do we have friends that says, let me, let me remind you what the Bible says? Or, or do we have friends that says, uh-oh, Christian's not supposed to act like that. What kind, what kind of friend do we have? The best friend that we ever have is Jesus Christ in our life. You can't beat him. He, he'll show us the right way. He'll never lead us astray. He'll never show us a path that, that's wrong. Uh, God will lead us in, he, Jesus Christ will lead us in the direction that we need to go if we allow him to be our best friend. But a lot of times, we get caught up in this world when we need to be kingdom and heavenly minded. We need God in our life. We need Him. If you need a friend, let me introduce you to Jesus Christ. He's the best friend you can have. He'll be there day and night. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. And He's never more than just saying, hey, Jesus, I need to talk to you. That's all He's waiting on. He's a prayer away. When we get Him into our life, then He'll come down. He'll show us. He, get Him in your life. Get Him in your heart. Get Him inside you. He'll, he'll be that conscience that we need to show us what way we need to go. Just show us to, if we're getting going to the right or show us if we're going to the left and and uh, he'll be there he's just waiting on us he's waiting on us to invite him in so if you need a friend if you have friends that's leading you astray leading you contrary to the word of god i first of all want to throw this out of warning that you might have stepped back and look at them and their friendship and back up and say wait maybe this is what i need or if you got godly friends in church I encourage you to keep them. But most importantly, have the best friend ever you can have in your life. His name is Jesus Christ. And the only way you can find him is when you talk to him. The only way you can find him is when you read the scripture and get him living in your soul. And he's, like I said, he's never more than prayer away. He's just waiting on us. You need Jesus Christ. He's the best friend that uh, anyone can uh, have. And he's there. He'll, he'll, he'll take you through the hard times in life. And, and uh, the old song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. And what a friend we really do. He's there to, for all of our sins. He's there to carry our grief. And, and, and the privilege that we have, as that song says, to take it, everything to Him in prayer. All of our troubles, all of our trials, all, everything that we have, we can give to Him. And He can work it out. He can show us what we need to do only if we have Him as a friend. We should never, we should never get discouraged in this life when we got Jesus Christ on our side. He's the greatest friend that we can have. Uh, we're going to have trials. We're going to have temptations. Let's, let's not uh, let's not live a bare head in the sand like the ostriches. We know that we walk through things in life and we fall down. We make mistakes, but we still have Jesus Christ there. We still have Him as a friend, and that's one thing about God. It doesn't matter if you falter. It doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't matter if you even live for Him. If you call upon Him to be your friend, He will be your friend. Uh, he, he, he doesn't cast us out. He doesn't kick us down, but he's there to encourage us. And that's the kind of friend we need. Hey, come on, child. You can do this. Come on, child of mine. You can make this happen. Come on. You can live for me. I believe in you. If no one else in this world believes in you, remember this. Jesus Christ believes in you. He believes that you can be a child of God. And he, can believe, he, believe, he believes in you so much that he gave his life for you that you can find salvation and make heaven your home. So be careful on the friends that you have. If they're pulling you away, 
That's a warning. Get away from them. If they're encouraging you, it's good to have friends like that. But I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. He's the best friend. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I encourage you to do so, especially before he comes to call his church family home. So God bless you and be have a friend in Jesus today.